Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Duane, and this week we're assessing the UAE's ecological footprint, looking at the sustainable ideas on the table to boost recycling and green growth. The Emirates is currently one of the world's largest consumers of single use plastic, and yet less than 10% of it is recycled. We meet an entrepreneur who's had the bottle to turn this waste into eco friendly clothing and fashion accessories. A little bit later in the show, we'll assess the future of UAE landfill sites and we come face to face with a shark with an appetite for rubbish. But first, the World Green Economy Summit has just wrapped up in the region. Here are the highlights of an event which explored everything from green smart technology to green funding opportunities. At the annual gathering of WGES, Climate change delegates and energy executives met to discuss developing smart green cities across the globe, which means going digital in everything from currencies to issuing parking tickets and investing in green capital. The issue of countries phasing out fossil fuels and shifting to clean energy was also discussed. The energy transformation is one that is currently already underway. It is unstoppable. It is irreversible. That is not going to be stopped because the far forces of the market are with us. Um, in addition to the moral, uh, the moral imperative. According to the United Nations, for both advanced and developing countries to reignite growth and deliver on the UN Sustainable Development Goals, plus reduce climate risk in line with the Paris Agreement, they'll need to invest around $90 trillion over the next 13 years. Former French President François Hollande a keynote speaker at the event said that sticking to agreed targets was key to countries around the world achieving their sustainability goals. We must accelerate, we must invest, that uh, it happens in, uh, in Dubai. We must uh, not wait, we must uh, consider, even if Donald Trump has cut his uh, commitment, we must uh, consider that we must go far and far. Other news generated ahead of the event came from Seoul-based Global Green Growth Institute, which promotes the idea that environmental sustainability is compatible with economic growth. It signed a $1.1 billion deal with the Dubai-based governmental World Green Economy Organization to finance green projects in 60 smart cities over the next three years. As the UAE population has risen, so too have the number of construction sites dotting the landscape. And the building debris left behind is a mounting problem. Salim Saeed investigates what smart solutions the country has to solve its waste worries. Talking rubbish might seem like a waste of time, but in the UAE, it's a prevailing topic as the country seeks to reduce its environmental footprint. The Emirates has one of the highest waste generation rates in the world not in small part due to its population having tripled to 9.4 million since 2000, according to the World Bank. Seeking solutions, the country aims to reduce landfill waste by 75% by 2021. The 75% is a very challenging target. People might not understand that it is um, not easy to achieve. So the benefit is that in a very short period, minimizing the amount of the waste sent to the landfill, by providing environmental and treatment solutions. According to the city's 2017 State of Environment report, a third of the debris produced in Abu Dhabi comes from building sites. And one way the government is looking to minimize this is with the recently opened Hayathi Recycling Facility, which aims to reuse leftover structural materials to build roads and other infrastructure using at least 40% recycled material. It will also reduce pressure on its largest landfill site in the Al-Dhafra region, which currently takes up to 70,000 tons of construction and demolition waste per month. The Hayathi Recycling Facility can handle that amount and more, with the ability to recycle 31,000 tons of waste per month, allowing Abu Dhabi to turn construction and demolition debris into usable building material, and also not waste natural resources. Precious resources, for example, like water and limestone. The plant also aims to reduce pollutants like carbon dioxide caused by transporting rubble to and from landfills. Another idea for regional environmentalists to sink their teeth into is a waste-eating shark in Dubai. It's a bionic fish which detects and feeds on floating debris. Like plastic bottles and crisp packets, the waste shark then safely swims back to shore to deliver its collection for recycling. 
The friendly fish is only two years old and silently goes about its business. It also has zero carbon emissions. Plus, given that it's packed with smart technology, the shark will soon add to its daily duties as a field researcher. Probably the most exciting with the way shark is that we can fit it with a number of sensors. So those sensors will provide data on the water, the air, it can fit with up to 250 different measures of sensors, and all that will provide up to the minute environmental data. If plans go swimmingly, you can expect to see this mechanical coast guard in the UAE waters by the end of the year to solve the country's waste problems today rather than dumping them on future generations. It's estimated that an average UAE resident can get through around 450 plastic water bottles in a single year. And one British expatriate has found a novel way to turn this supposed trash into cash by starting his own clothing company which makes plastic look fantastic. Green will always be the new black for entrepreneur Chris Barber, who stamps out daily in t-shirts, shorts and bags made from the eco-manufacturing business Degrade he founded nearly 10 years ago. Using plastic bottles collected from local businesses, Chris's team washes, flakes and then melts the plastic to produce short fibres. The material is then spun into recycled yarn and woven. The process uses around 50% less energy than manufacturing polyester from scratch and it releases 55% less carbon emissions. To fulfill the company's monthly requirement of plastic, it works with partners like Sharjah-based waste management firm Bia, which handles more than 2 million tonnes of different types of waste every year. Waste is not waste until you waste it. Almost all types of material that you throw in the bin is a raw material for somebody in this world. Sharjah has the ambitious goal of zero waste going to landfill by 2020 and wants to become the environmental capital of the Middle East. We have celebrated one year now with zero construction and demolishing waste reaching landfill. We are the only emirate that doesn't have any issue anymore with waste tires. We have celebrated one year of zero furniture and household appliances reaching landfill. Plastics and landfills can take thousands of years to decompose, and the financial impact is huge, with the World Economic Forum estimating that after a short first-use cycle, 95% of plastic packaging material, worth up to $120 billion, is lost to the global economy every year. In a bid to help UAE residents contribute directly to the local circular economy, Chris Spear heads a campaign called Simply Bottles, helping companies and schools create their own recycling centres. His big green goal is that in the not-too-distant future, recycling in the UAE will outweigh its plastic pollution. Chris, a very warm welcome to Inspire Middle East. Thank you for inviting me. Starting with the big picture here in the UAE and the problem of plastic recycling, plastic waste, how is it impacting the delicate ecosystem from the marine life to the desert? Well, quite severely, actually. Um, would you believe that about 50% of all camels are dying through plastic ingestion? Similarly, a lot of fish are actually um, eating or digesting microplastics. And for the marine life, this is a, a, a problem as well, not just uh, in the region, but globally. And there's a huge problem with fish as well, uh, consuming plastic, microplastics especially. Uh, plastic breaks down into very small particles and fish consume those particles and it gets into their uh, digestive system. And obviously then that gets into the human food chain. So this is a, a huge environmental crisis. How might the recycling problem be tackled more head on here? We've seen the success of landfill taxes in the UK. It's being tested and rolled out here in the UAE. Is that the way forward? Yeah, I mean, that's now happening. Uh, thankfully, the, the government are now uh, imposing landfill taxes uh, on trucks. And there's promises that they'll increase that again next year. Now, you've got manufacturing operations in Asia, but the plan is to bring the supply chain uh, here closer to market in the Middle East. How are you doing that? So we're actually opening our first plant in Dubai, um, and we're going to be doing the process from plastic bottle all the way through to yarn, uh, which will be a showcase for Expo. 
Now, this operation will be the first bottled to yarn recycling plant in the world. But how is it playing back into the local and national green economy? Are you creating jobs? Are you boosting growth? The plant itself will solve the, the crisis that we have in the region because we can take as much plastic as we can have. We can also, as you say, create jobs. Um, we can put the UAE on the map as being the innovators of this technology. How easy is it for the UAE to reduce its plastic footprint? The technology is there, but is the mindset, is the awareness there? I think that's a very important question. The issue tends to be from a retail perspective, certainly as far as supermarkets concerned, there's a lot of unnecessary use of plastic. It's been a long-term campaign to try and ban plastic bags, and in fact, Things like straws, they've managed now to, to reduce the use of us, and straws are one of the worst uh, offenders of uh, plastic pollution. So I'm glad that that's happening. Buying your clothing range will cost me a little more than conventional non-recycled fabric clothing. So what's your elevator pitch to convince me to buy? The whole fa fast fashion uh, trend is something that I hope will slow down. That's how cheap they are, it, I, d I don't think that's right because uh, there's, there's an incentive by retailers to actually pile it high and sell it cheap. And I would like to see the day that we actually cost parallel to conventional fabrics. Chris, it's been great to speak with you today. Thank you for talking to Inspire. Thank you very much. Well, that wraps up our show for this week. Before I say goodbye, here are some recycling enthusiasts posting their green achievements on social media. Waging the war against single-use plastic one straw at a time is Jocelyn, the founder of the NGO Recycle Lebanon. And environmentalist Ibrahim from Egypt, designer for the brand Mubikia, debuts his latest futuristic furniture made from recycled waste products.